Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the ActiveX slider control in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from James in Pelham, Florida, one of my gold members. This question was actually posted in the forums on my website. James wants to know if there's any way to set a value on a form using a slider. Well, yeah, you can. Let me show you how. First thing, you will need to know a little bit of VBA to do this because the slider control can't be bound to a field like other controls can. So you need one line of VBA code in order to set a value on your form from the slider control. I'll show you how to do it, but I recommend go watch my intro to VBA video first if you've never done any VBA programming. It's not hard. Don't be intimidated. Go watch this video. It's free. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the link section down below the video. Next warning, I particularly don't like ActiveX controls. I find them unreliable, especially if you're switching between different versions of Access, if you're sharing your database on your network and people might have different versions of Access, uh, either the version number or the bitness, 32-bit, 64-bit, or they've got different versions of Windows installed. Everything has to be identical on your system for this to work on another system. If you set it up on yours and you give it to someone else who's got a slightly different configuration, the ActiveX control might not work. Got to have the same version of Access, same version of the ActiveX control. It's basically a control that's that's outside of Access. It's not one of the built-in Access controls. And while I have it on the Evil Access stuff page, it's down here under Frown Upon, right? ActiveX objects because they're unreliable. It may work, it may not. If it works for you, great. If not, well, okay. Um, you might, if you're the only user of your database and it works for you and you want to use it, great. You want a slider control? Beautiful, perfect. But be aware that if you upgrade access in the future, it may not work. If you give your database to someone else, it may not work. So just be aware of that stuff. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free download from my website. You can grab a copy if you want to. Again, I'll put a link down below in the link section. I'm just going to put a slider control on here to set some value. So I'm going to go to design view. And let's make this a little bit bigger so we got some room to work with here. I'm going to put a big slider right here. Okay. Now, the slider control is found in the ActiveX objects in your uh, form design controls toolbox. All right. Right down here, ActiveX controls. Click on that. All right. There's a whole big long list of ActiveX controls. These are all outside of Access. They work in Excel and the other Office applications, but they're not part of Access. Okay. So scroll down this list until you find the Microsoft Slider Control version 6.0. And again, that's something that might be different. You might have version 5.0 or a different version of the slider control. Okay, I've covered the progress bar control in here before too, where you can so show progress going across the bottom. All right, so click on that, hit OK. That puts a control right there. All right, we're going to resize it, make it nice and big. Okay, you can change the height and width, of course, just like any other control. All right, and if you save this now, close your form, reopen it. There you go, there's your little slider control. All right, now it's, right now it's set, what is it, 1 to 10? Let's see, 0 to 10, okay? We could change a lot of options. Right-click, design view. First thing I'm going to do is give it a name. So, see, you can't even double-click to bring up the properties. you got to right-click and pick properties. There you go. There's, there's, some, there's some weird idiosyncrasies with it. Okay, so let's go to all. I don't want slider six. I'll call it, just call it my slider. There are a bunch of properties on here. I'm not going to explain what they are, like this class property. Don't worry about it. You'll never have to change it. Now you'll notice under data, there's no control source in here. So you can't just bind this to a field on the form or a field in the underlying table, like you can with a text box. See, text box is a control source. So whatever you put in here is going to be the value in there, or you can bind it to a field in a table. You can't do that with a slider control. So we need to use an event to populate some other box with the value as it's changed on here. But before we do that, let's take a look at some of the properties we can change. Here's a little bug I've noticed right here. Watch. If I click on this while it's already highlighted, look at that. I get a little ghosted image of it up here. It, it just doesn't really exist. It's just there. I don't know. See, these things are weird. <laughs> the the, the third-party ActiveX controls are weird. And I say third party because you can get them from other people too. Uh, I guess Microsoft wouldn't technically be a third party, but they're not built into Access. That's what I mean. All right. So most of the properties you're going to want are on the other tab over here, right? The other tab. It's got the stuff that's 
pretty much specific to the slider. Okay, do you want it to be a tab stop, tab index, all that stuff, control tip text. Uh, right down here, we got large change and small change. Okay, the small change is one, large change is five. The small change is just when you, when you go from one unit to another, you want it to go up in increments of one. Okay, max down here would be the maximum value. Min would be the minimum value. So if your minimum value is one, put one in there. Maximum would be 100. Okay, see that? Now, save that. Let's take a look at what that does. All right, see, now you can slide this and drag it like that, see? Now, small change is if you click on this and drag it one at a time. See, I get one at a time changes. The, the, the large change is if you click out here in the bar, see? All right, and you can't really see the values, but it's going up five at a time. That's what that large change is, or down five at a time, or you can click and drag. Okay, right-click, design view. Coming back in here, other. All right. Orientation, you can go horizontal or vertical. You can make a vertical one too. You have to resize this obviously, but it works the same. Um, select range, you can actually pick a range of values, a maximum and a minimum value. And I'll cover that in the extended cut for the members, but that's pretty neat too. Um, don't worry about cell start and cell length. That has to do with the range. The tick style, what do you want the ticks to look like? All right, top left. All right, both, bottom, no ticks. All right, I'm going to go top left. Tick frequency, you might not want to see one every one, maybe every five. And there's one tick every five. See that? You could change the mouse pointer. All right, what do you want it to look like when you hover over it with different stuff? Like you can make it look like, um, oh, I don't know. Let's just do, uh, let's do the hourglass. <laughs> It'll look dumb, but watch. When you hover over it now, you get the hourglass. It used to be called the hourglass because in older versions of Windows, it actually looked like an hourglass. Now it's a circle. All right. But I, I almost never play with that. So I'm going to put this back to default. Okay. You can use the scroll wheel for this thing too. Right? If you have a mouse scroll wheel, just, just click on it and then scroll up and down. See? I'm using my scroll wheel. That's kind of neat. You can also use the keyboard left and right. That's a small change. See? There's some formatting things you can change if you go to the format tab. Uh, like the special effect flat. I like to go with either raised or sunken. That's just me. Or shadowed even. You can change how that looks kind of. See the little shadowed effect or raised effect. Um, click. Yeah, there it is. Uh, border transparent. Here's something stupid. You can change the border and the border color. Like you can make it red. But you can't change background color. I can't make the whole slider red or pink or whatever. There's no option for it. All right. There's border color. There's no back color. Can't even change it in VBA. I think that's dumb, personally. Okay. What else we got? You could change the, the padding inside here, how much extra space you want, all that different stuff. Okay, now, how do we get the value from this into a field on our form? Well, let's use this field here. I'm going to call this, uh, this will be my value, we'll call it. You can, you can obviously make this uh, text box bound to a table if you want to do something like a customer value. I'll just call this guy my value. And I'll, there'll be no control source. This, this text box isn't bound. But you can make it bound if you want to. Put a value in here like credit limit or whatever. Okay, so the name of the box is my value. Let me turn that red off. That's annoying me. Black. There we go. Okay. So now, we need to use an event to put the value for this when it's changed into this box. All right? Kind of like an after update event. If you've never watched my after update event video, go watch that. All right? So when you, when you make a change in one field, it'll run an event to do something else. Okay. Now, if you look in the events for my slider, you got enter and exit. That's when you go into a field and out of it. And then got focus and lost focus. Same thing when you click on it or you click off of it. And then there's on updated. Now you'd think that on updated would fire when you update this value. So I'm going to go dot, dot, dot. All right. Here's my code builder. Let me just resize this a little bit. All right. Where are we at? We're down here. My slider updated. All right. I'm going to just type in here, message box, hi there. Okay, so that should run, you'd think, when the slider value is updated. Okay, so watch. Come out here, click, close this, open it back up again. Ready? Make a change. And nothing's happening. The event doesn't work. Okay? You'd think that's what it would do, but it doesn't do anything. 
All right. So we don't want to use the updated event. We want to use another event, which doesn't appear in the property window. Okay. Which is going to be my slider. Make sure you're on my slider over here. Drop this down and go to change. You want to use the change event for my slider. So I'll take this and move it up in here now. Okay. And we can get rid of the updated. Updated to something different, which I'm not going to go into right now. But now when I change this, bing, hi there. Okay, so the change event means that the slider has been changed. Now we can grab that value and put it up in here. So all we have to say is right here, my value, that's the name of my text box, equals my slider. Yeah, you could say my value dot value equals my slider dot value, but the dot value property is assumed, so you don't need it. Just like me is assumed. You don't have to say me dot or me exclamation point something. Okay. All right. So me value equals, or my value equals my slider. Let's see if it works. Oh, look at that. See, 77, 16, 38, whatever. Same. There you go. Now you set the maximum value, 100, and then value is 1. Put this on your customer form. Then you just set the control source in this guy, right? To whatever is that. And then you're, there you go. That's how you set the value. All right, one more demonstration. Let's copy this. Copy that control. Let's go to the customer control. Customer F, here we are. All right, right click, design view. Let's say we want to use this with family size. All right, here, I'll put family size. Yeah, we'll just leave it right there. That's fine. I'm going to paste that slider control that I brought over. Okay. And let's say I want to use this to control the family size. Let me, let me just rearrange these just a little bit. So it's a little more obvious what I'm doing here. Put you guys up there and I'll put family size there. Okay. Now family size one to a hundred is kind of silly. So let's go to the other tab. Let's say minimum family size is one. Let's say maximum family size is 20. That's a little more reasonable. Okay, and we'll make the, uh, yeah, that's fine. So I'll change five. That's good. All right. So now in our events, we got to get to the event somehow. So dot, 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 and then just come up here and change this to the change event. Okay. Right here, say family size equals my slider. Save it. Okay, we can get rid of this. Delete it. Okay, close that. And then we'll come back into the main menu, go to the customer form. And now watch this. See, I'm changing the family size. Okay. Now you need one more event. If you want to load the value from family size into the slider when the record opens. So we'll put that in the on current event, right, right here. Go to the forms properties, go to events, go to on current. On current event runs when the form is opened or when you move from record to record. Now we're going to say my slider equals family size. Just going backwards. All right, save it and then close it. And now when I open the customer form, look, that value is in there now. 14, 1, 4, see how it's moving? 1, right? Let me say uh, Will Riker's family size is 20. All right, come back over here. It goes back to one, go back to Will Riker and it's 20. Okay, so that's how you can set the value and then read the value back again. If you want to learn more about the slider control in the extended cut for members, I show you how to also store a minimum and a maximum range value. That's covered in the extended cut for members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. And gold members can download this stuff. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. 
If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.